that, that's where we have our server room, which has, um, I think, I don't know, somewhere in the order of uh, 500 processors for computing, uh, doing uh, computational fluid dynamics, finite element analysis, um, and uh, obviously all of our server storage for our 3D solid modeling and that kind of thing. It's, it's amazing how many processes you can get in a, in a small space these days with, with modern computing. Um, over there, um, this is under construction, but this is where our uh, mission control and launch control will be. So there's two, imagine like two big cinema screens. That's one of them, and that's another one over there in the back. Um, and we can either have one giant image, uh, or we can have four smaller images. So this whole thing is going to get laid out, and there's going to be a, um, a glass tile floor, which is illuminated from below, um, and these cool desks with kind of blue lights. It'll look really pretty, pretty neat. So th this area is where we do all of our, in our, our inspection. And it's, it's climate controlled and particulate controlled, so um, because metals expand and contract at different temperatures, so we always want to make sure this room is at exactly 68 degrees for doing our precision me measurement. And wherever possible, we try to design a part in, in, in 3D, to ma manufacture it in 3D, uh, and then to inspect it in 3D. So we minimize the number of 2D or 3D conversions. Um, occasionally, something's better in 2D, but mostly it's better in 3D. So here we are, and its uh, temperature just went down a whole lot because we're in our uh, precision control area. And what that machine is going to do is it's going to inspect uh, that part down to within thousandths of an inch to verify that everything was machined as it should have been. So what we have here is, th this is a, that's a mass simulator of the Falcon 1 first stage engine, that's a mass simulator of the second stage engine over there. Um, and we have what's called a, a full hardware in the loop simulation of the vehicle. So from an avionics and electronic uh, standpoint and from a steering standpoint, uh, the uh, flight computer and, uh, and, and avionics think that they're flying the vehicle to space. And then we verify that they've done all the, the computer's actually done all the things it's supposed to do to, to make the rocket get successfully to space. So here we're in our avionics test facility. That's where we do um, test avionics of all sizes and shapes. So here we have a bunch of thermal cycling chambers that'll take parts and put them through um, uh, you know, 50 thermal cycles to verify that things are going to be okay. And the temperature environment in space is much worse than on the ground because you don't have the you don't have things, you don't have air to even out the temperature. So you could actually have to have something could be in, in searing sunlight or blackest night. Um, and it's got to be able to handle uh, much more of a temperature range than it would on Earth. That's a, a thermal vacuum uh, cycler, so it'll test both. Uh, it'll test the ad part in vacuum going through the temperature cycles. That's our shaker room. It's got two t uh, small and a big shaker, so we can simulate the en enormous acoustic and vibrational loads that parts experience during the rocket takeoff. Um, and that's, that's really where things tend to break more than any other place. Yeah, we're just doing a little uh, um, video blog thing of, uh, oh, of what's happening. Yes, exactly. I'm Bilan Taltan. I'm an avionics engineer. Um, what I'm doing here right now is to set up for a test upcoming of our second stage that we're going to send out to, uh, to Texas for a hot fire. Uh, what you see here is our electrical ground support equipment, a copy of what we actually have out on Quadrant on the launch pad. We do exactly a one to one replica here test out the stages before we send them out, so uh, we will be putting the stage to its bases tomorrow and we're just doing some preparatory work right now. Yeah, this is our um, electromagnetic interference test chamber. It looks vaguely like a torture chamber, but uh, it's, it, so it's basically set up so that when we, we can take our uh, uh, rocket or spacecraft and put, put the section here with, with all the antennas and radios, because it was like a dozen radios on, on the vehicle of various, or either transmitters or receivers of various kinds. And we're going to make sure they don't interfere with one another and that they've got good, um, we, can, we can sort of verify that the signal that's going out is going to be well received by the ground. And that's what we use this chamber for. It's really great.